Hm, said the girl. Is something bothering you? Came a voice like a warm breeze. No, I'm fine. I have the whole thing figured out, the girl snapped. Just then, she started to look around. She saw an old elm tree next to her, the school far across the playground, and not another person close enough to talk to. Am I talking to a tree? She wondered aloud. Well, I am the only one here, said the tree with a wink. So what's bothering you? Kids at this school have been telling me for a long time that I'm a very good listener. I don't need to talk. I've figured it out. I'm just going to invite Emma's sister over after school. But I am not going to invite Emma, the girl said, with her arms crossed and her chin in the air. Why not? asked the tree. Because last time I was at Emma's house, she had another friend come too. And you know what she did? She totally ignored me. She didn't even notice when I left, she held. Oh, I see, said the tree. Your feelings are hurt. So you're going to get even with Emma. Getting even? I'm not getting even, the words coming from the girl in a great rush. I just want to play with Emma's sister today, without Emma. Usually you and Emma have lots of fun together, said the tree. I guess we do, the girl said thoughtfully. But she hurt my feelings. I understand. Your heart and your stomach are tied up in knots. If you leave Emma out so her heart hurts too, will that help you feel better? Asked the tree. Not when you say it like that. That just sounds mean. But what else can I do? Pleaded the girl. You can be bigger, replied the tree. I can't be bigger than her. She's like half a head taller than me, said the girl. I mean the kind of bigger, where you're bigger than the wrong done to you, the tree explained. Being bigger is when you treat someone the way you would like to be treated, even when they haven't been that kind to you. Why should I be nice to her? She hurt me, and I want her to know, said the girl, with her brow furrowed and her hands clenched in fists. Let me tell you a story about your grandmother. I saw her here one day with her arms crossed and a scowl on her face just like yours, said the tree. You know my grandma? asked the girl, curiosity winning out over her anger. Of course, she went to this school too, and I've been standing in this same spot watching kids play for a long, long time, explained the tree. My grandma went to school here? I thought they were too busy chasing dinosaurs and stuff said the girl with a smirk. Not only did they have schools, they had friends and lots of the same problems you and your friends work through, chuckled the tree. Your grandma had a very good friend who hurt her feelings. Your gran was so mad, she decided to ignore her friend when she came to the lunch table. So then her friend's feelings were hurt, and she invited other girls to play jump rope, but she left your gran out on purpose. Then your gran got back at her by not inviting her friend to a sleepover, even though all the other girls in the class were invited. Well, you see where this is going. One hurtful action led to another, and next thing you know, your gran and Mildred were enemies, said the tree. What? Do you mean Auntie Mildred? She and gran are best friends, she cried, puzzled. They are now, but only because your gran finally decided the time had come to be bigger than the mess she was in, explained the tree. How did she be bigger? asked the girl. She thought about what she really wanted, explained the tree. First, she wanted to have her good friend back. She also wanted to stop the ache that was in her heart all the time. Staying mad and feeling hurt takes a lot out of you when you keep doing it every day. That's for sure, murmured the girl. Your gran went to Mildred and explained that the whole thing started because the last time she was at Mildred's house, she felt left out and ignored, said the tree. Mildred, feeling a bit guilty, explained she hadn't realized your gran was upset. She apologized for not paying more attention to your gran's feelings from the start. Then Mildred told gran that she felt pretty awful when gran ignored her and didn't invite her to the sleepover. They figured out 
that it felt a lot better to talk about how they felt than to stay in a big fight, said the tree. That sounds awfully hard and embarrassing. I don't want to talk to Emma. It'll be easier just to pretend nothing happened, said the girl. Well, there's the easy way and there's the right way. If you want the ache in your heart to stop, choose the right way, advised the tree. Like I said, that sounds awfully hard, the girl complained. Sometimes doing the right thing is hard, but it's only hard for a little while. Then it gets better, said the tree. When you pick the easy way, your heart aches with anger and regret a little bit, but you stay bummed for a long time. When you pick the right way, you might feel embarrassed or really uncomfortable for a short while, but then it gets better, and the aches in your heart melt like chocolate on a summer day, she said. Melting chocolate sure sounds better than how I'm feeling now. If I go talk to her, you think we can be friends like we used to be? The girl asked. You'll be even better friends for having grown through a challenge together. How do you think your grand and Mildred got to be such good friends? Suggested the tree. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go over there right now and talk to her. The girl said, pulling herself up tall, proud of herself for doing the right thing. I'm proud of you, too.